Hey everybody, I'm Dan Thorpe from Guitar Domination. Today I want to talk about practice routines. This is something that frustrates a lot of people. Most people don't like practice routines simply because one day, a while back, years ago or something, they Google a practice routine or see one in a book or a magazine, they try it, realize it's incredibly boring and not very relevant to them. You know, they're very rigid, a lot of practice routines. Do 10 minutes of scales, 10 minutes of chords, 10 minutes of this, 10 minutes of that. Uh, arpeggios, uh, sweet picking or stuff, and stuff that's often not relevant to the student. So it's very off-putting, but I want to keep it relevant. This is going to work for everybody, this practice routine, and it will make you a better player, 100% guaranteed. Okay, now this practice routine is based off one of my rules of improving and learning guitar better and faster than ever, and that is to get as good as you can, as fast as you can, you should always be working on fixing the mistakes that hold you back. Okay, that is absolutely key in life or anything. If there's something that you need to achieve and you're good at one thing, not as good at another, then the thing that's gonna hold you back the most is obviously what you're not very good at. So this practice routine is all about something I call the to-do list. Now a to-do list is a list of all the things that hold you back in your play. Okay, now for instance, if you, uh, we'll take a to-do list I've made up. This is very common, one with my students. And I'll put it up to the screen now. Okay, and you'll see the sort of things on there. This is the sort of things that are on my students' to-do lists a lot of the time. Okay, these are the things that hold them back. A G to C chord change is one, you know, a typical student will write that on, okay. So if they basically, if they're playing every day and they find something, you know, a little thing that keeps coming up or popping up a few times, that's, you know, really holding them back. You know, like they're playing a song like, you know, uh, Brown Eyed Girl and they're going G, C, G, D. Okay, that's the song. Okay, majority of it. And that G to C chord change is really tripping them up. So they're good at the G to D, so that's fine. Instead of working on the whole of standby, uh, no, wrong song, instead of working on the whole of uh, Brown Eyed Girl, they'll work on that G to C chord change specifically. So if the rest of the song sounds pretty good, like, you know, your G to D, your D back to G and all that, all the different changes are really good. Don't spend time practicing those. Spend time on the thing that really matters, that G to C, the bit that's tripping you up. Okay, and write it on your to-do list. And then what you do, you get a list of all these things, you know, it could be two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight, whatever things, and you work on them every day, just for a little bit. Ideally, on your to-do list, you're gonna have a couple of things as a minimum, because everybody's got something that's holding them back a little bit. You don't want any more than eight. I think eight is a good number um, as a maximum. Ideally, five or six is about right, and you try and work on them every day. Because if you get too many, basically, you know, you're know, you gonna have a, a long time of doing your to-do list every day. You're gonna have to split it up into different days. So put your biggest ones on them, the things that are really holding you back, which we've all got and beginners have all the time. Okay, so you probably know what they are, but you might have to think about them a bit, play for a few songs, keep a pen and uh, paper, you know, a little notebook next to you, um, and write them down, the ones that hold you back. Okay, and then every single day, you work on your to-do list for 10 minutes, and it's that simple. Once you get good at one thing on your to-do list, and you feel super confident that you've nailed it, cross it off. Okay, Just cross it off, and then move on, that's it, you've achieved something really, really powerful. And psychologically, that's such a massive boost when you see something that's really held you back and you overcome that hurdle. Every time you get a new hurdle, you add it on and then you spend some time every day, even for two minutes a day on it, whatever, on that one thing, and you just try and make little improvements every day, then you cross it off. How good does that feel? Because as a lot of beginners out there you know, know um, and intermediates, it's easy to get stuck, you know, it's easy to think, oh, I'm just not getting any better at this, I'm not getting any better at it. But you work on those things specifically. For instance, if I wanted to work on a G to C chord change, you know, and I had the basic technique down, you know, I would like go doing that, then I'd put a metronome on, I'd play along with a click. You know, I could do maybe at 70 beats per minute one day. Then the next day I'd try and put 72. So I'd put a little note next to it, you know, 72. And then you know, maybe then the next day, 74, 75, whatever, you just try and increase it every day. Okay, another thing on there is like strumming tone. If somebody's got a poor strumming tone, with their up strums, has been written on there. Every day, I'll just spend a couple of minutes just going, just lightly trying to get that nice up strumming tone going. 
okay, you know, rather than going in a song. You know, where it's kind of like that in a song or whatever, you know, instead you're working just on these upstrums. Set a timer for each of those things on the to-do list for two minutes, three minutes, whatever you want to do, whatever time you've got, it's flexible. Okay, you know, for instance, on the list as well, you've got picking strings, okay? So a lot of people, when they're playing something like... will miss a string. And that happens, and it's like, ah, so angry and frustrated. Spend two minutes a day just working on keeping nice close pick control so you're not picking a note and moving too far away you know so I'm working on keeping it nice and close getting everything good accurately just working on that watching my right hand to see that every pluck stays close to the string because the further you move away you know the more likely you are to miss that's a little tip there but all these things you know on the to-do list you know generally things I talk about quite a bit anyway so you can search through my other videos but the idea is not what's on your to-do list that doesn't matter because it's unique to everybody so it really doesn't matter what you want to improve on we are playing your to-do list is unique to you it could be beginner stuff you know like working on your upstrums making sure they sound quite nice and sweet it could be you know getting a decent finger picking tone a bit of speed to it. It could be uh, flamenco style stuff. It really doesn't matter. Your to-do list is unique to you. Those are some things that have been on my to-do list over the years. Various things like that. Okay, so it could be very specific. You know, for instance, the uh, E minor bar chord shape was one I struggled with. That was on there, you know? Being able to do legato. Lots of hammer-ons and pull-offs like that. That was on there, okay? Doing embellishments within chords, I should say. Doing that particular hammer-on with a D chord. spend ages to learn that when I was first started doing it because my fingers just weren't in the right position. So see how specific that is? Being able to do a D chord with a hammer on and pull off with the middle finger. You know, and these are little details that you gotta work on or write down. All the specific things to you. So make it unique to you. Spend 10 minutes a day on your to-do list, okay? You spend the rest of your practice time having fun, enjoying your stuff that you're already good at and learning new stuff if you want. But your to-do list is what's holding you back, so that's what you work on every day. If you chalk things off, it's such a wonderful feeling. That's what you want to do. But just be honest, obviously, if you feel like you've got a bit better but it's not perfect, don't chalk it off yet. Just keep working on it. Just set that time aside, 10 minutes, um, and then just spend the rest of the time having fun. Because if you have fun, you know, you're going to improve. Okay, that's a, a simple thing about it. If you're playing a song that you play, like, really, really well, um and you're happy with it and it sounds great, you'd be feel you know, quite confident to perform it. You could keep playing that song every day and you'll still make slight little improvements. You know, you'll just get that, you know, it could just be technically where you're just a little bit more relaxed. It could be tonally that you're improving something. It could be that the rhythm improves slightly where you get more foot tapping going on with the song. So, or even the good stuff that you're good at, you could still improve with and you will make improvements, but you'll play it and you'll be having fun. So that's the double whammy there. So you're gonna be playing it, having fun. And then your to-do list is like, yeah, roll up your sleeves, you know, get down in the trenches, do your hard work sort of stuff. Okay, it's really important stuff. Um, hope you enjoyed learning about what the to-do list. Um, it's something I use with all students. I recommend everybody have one. I use one myself, okay, and it changes, you know, obviously things cross off. But there's certain things that I need to improve on, I know, and there's certain things we can all improve on. So your to-do list is where it's at. Right, anything that you struggle with, eight is about the maximum, remember, and you're just trying to chalk stuff off, okay? And the idea is you achieve it, uh, you improve on it, you just chalk it off, and anytime something new pops up, you add it on, and then chalk it off. And every time you add one and chalk one, you just 
improving all the time. Okay, and you know, it's a little more advanced sort of idea, but if your, um, you know, your practice time varies every day, so for instance, one day you get an hour, you could spend 15 minutes on your to-do list, you could spend half an hour if you're feeling really motivated. Okay, motivation isn't standard, it changes for everybody, it, you know, it fluctuates, it's very fluid. One day you'll feel super motivated, you might want to spend half an hour on your to-do list, the next day you might be a little bit tired from work, a little bit grumpy, <laughs> and so you might only want to spend like, 10 minutes or 5 minutes, you might only want to spend a minute. You might not want to do your to-do list at all. Even then, I recommend just throwing one little thing on it on a day that you're feeling really unmotivated. Okay, but generally, try and spend 10 minutes as as a minimum. Other days, you can spend a bit more. Okay, so you might spend like 75% having fun, 25% of your time on the to-do list. Another day, it might be another another, uh, another ratio. It might be 50-50, for instance, so... You're fluid with it, okay? But 10 minutes is a good number. It's like a magic number to sort of think about because you'll make improvements then. And 10 minutes is nothing. Over a year, 10 minutes isn't a lot of time to spend 10 minutes a day over a year, okay? Uh, but you'll make big improvements to it. So that's the idea. If you follow this practice routine, you'll have more fun and you'll improve faster than you would have done otherwise. Forget all those rubbish practice routines where you just download it off of the internet. You know, like I remember reading in a magazine when I was younger, the Steve Vai eight hour workout which was ridiculous i was like what who's got eight hours to practice playing guitar you know i used to know a guy who'd do that but he wasn't the most interesting guy in the world let's say that you know sitting in his bedroom practicing all the time isn't very good you know he looked like he hadn't seen sunlight for quite a while but you know he was a great player don't get me wrong so if you've uh, got that sort of dedication then that's great but you don't need to do that forget all those practice routines this is a really really powerful practice routine it's not complicated, it's unique to you, specific to you, and it's pretty much bang on. You know, you're gonna improve if you follow this practice routine, and you're gonna have more fun. Improve faster and have more fun. You know, what more can you want for your guitar playing? That is pretty much ideal. And that's what we all want, to have more fun and improve faster. Right, so I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I want you to leave a comment, let me know what you think, because I love your comments. I wanna know exactly what you wanna learn this year on the guitar, what you wanna improve on. What's on your to-do list? Let me know, leave a comment and let me know and I'll make more videos to help you improve those things as well. So it's a double whammy for you. You'll get some tips if you leave a comment from me. They're relevant, but you'll also get me to teach more of the things that you want to improve on. So I want to help you with your to-do list this year and make lots more progress with your playing. Right, if you want some more help and advice on uh, practicing and the mental side of playing and all that sort of stuff, get my free ebook, The Eight Step Beginner's Guide. You can download it from my website at guitardomination.net. It's 100% free, it's a great book, it's short, it's powerful, it's straight to the point. Eight powerful steps that will help you with your playing. You can download that, you'll get some more extras as well, some other free ebooks and podcasts and all that sort of stuff and you'll get some tips sent to your email regularly okay until you don't want them anymore basically okay so um if you enjoy all the stuff then go get the ebook it's going to help you okay thanks for watching i'm dan thorpe from guitar domination and i'll see you in a video soon cheers bye bye